Hello Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker Application staff with a second in the series of getting familiar with the OSP P300M control on your three axis vertical Akuma machine. We are going to start with the machine in its powered up state and walk you through some of the screens that you will see on this control and make some sense of uh, what we're looking at and what is different between some of the older Akuma machine tools. When you first power on a modern P300M or MA control, generally you'll see the OSP Suite screen pop up in front. This one's a little diagnostic tool, gives us a, a splashy graphic and it gives us four buttons on the bottom that uh, you may want to memorize for later use. The first button is a picture of your machine and that's going to take us directly to the screen that uh, we will be operating parts. So once we're familiar with all these buttons, that's the one we're going to push on power up just to get ready to run the machine. The second over is a maintenance button. If I touch that guy, I have two different um, categories of maintenance items that I can, uh, I can utilize as a checklist for when it's time to uh, uh, take care of our machine. On the daily inspection side, it gives us a few items and the periodic inspection has a few of the more obscure items. And once one of these has expired, let's take the uh, cooling oil for the uh, spindle cooling unit, that bar will move all the way up to the 2000 hour mark and it will give us a little red icon in the upper right hand corner of the, uh, the maintenance button telling us that something is due and it will, um, on most of these items on your machine, you'll notice that there is an, uh, an item in the info block. If you touch that item, it'll take you to the maintenance manual and show you directly what the, uh, what the maintenance item they're asking for is, uh, where it's located and how to do it. Once you've executed that maintenance item, touching the execute button will reset this timer and everything's happy. Now one little footnote for you, this, uh, this periodic and daily inspection checklist will not generate an alarm onto your control. It simply puts the icon on the button to let you know that uh, you need to come over here and look. None of these items are, are deemed as uh, stop everything and don't run the machine until this is done. So they don't interact with the way your machine tool operates. Second button over is the manual library. If you touch this guy, you're going to see a PDF copy of all of the manuals that uh, your machine tool has. Now, currently I don't have any loaded on my simulator, but yours will come preloaded from the factory. And they are simply PDF copies of the box of manuals that was delivered with your machine. They are identical. So uh, if the information is in, the paper manual, you'll also see it show up in the PDF. And the last button is a little customizing button which allows you to change what you see on this particular screen. Now since we're not going to operate from this particular screen, I'm not going to go into that in depth. We'll, uh, we'll do that in a different video. But from this point, I'm ready to just touch the machine icon and take us to our uh, machining information screen. I like to call this one the main operating screen simply because this is precisely where I want to be running my part. It gives me the most amount of information available at any given time. It's broken up into four sections, so let's briefly talk about each one of these sections. Obviously, the lower left is showing you your program. If I am in automatic mode, as I am in this machine, and the machine is not running, I can use the cursor down arrow, and I could, if needed, start at the line that the chevron is, uh, is indicating. By touching this here and hitting my cycle start button, I could, if I were in a condition to run, start from right there. Uh, hitting reset will get you back up to the top. I don't uh, suggest using that for editing a program. Uh, that would be 
either the quick edit button down at the bottom or using your tool data button to go to the information page. This will not edit the program either, it'll just allow you to view it. So let's only utilize that arrow down button as the ability to start somewhere other than the very first line of code. The second block, our machine status, shows all the active G and M codes available on the machine. And if you are equipped with a spindle probe and tool setter, these little icons down here will show you when they're active and when they're in uh, uh, being used. The upper right hand corner is showing us the simulation, the graphics that will show this no matter what. You can, once that uh, field is selected, you can use the standard Akuma graphics functions such as changing your isometric view or erasing the graphics you see on the screen. Not a lot of people use this. I do have a couple of videos on how to populate it so that it's 3D and uh, you know solid modeling graphics, very handy, but um, it does take a little bit of extra work so if you'd like to become versed in that please check out some of the other videos on my channel. But I always point to this block when I'm training a new customer because the cutting time on the M control is shown right here, right on the front of the screen. It's dynamite, but it is very easy to miss if you're clouded by all the information that's being thrown at you. Cutting time, bottom right hand corner of the graphics window. And the last one is your active, uh, your actual position. This is not just a digital readout. It's not just a DRO sitting over here. You also have your spindle RPM, your current feed rate. This is the current tool and the tool next listing, plus your work offset, which, uh, which work coordinate are you in, the H and D value for the current tool that's called up, and let's go one step further, it shows you the value that's in the H. So let's say this is tool one, H1, D1. It will not only show me that in this field, but it'll show me the values that are currently residing in H1 and D1. Makes life uh, really quick for a uh, quick reference. Now that I've got the actual position field highlighted, if you use your page up and page down keys on your control, you'll notice that you can change the value of the, um, uh, or change the display in the actual position column, depending on what type of information you would like to see. For instance, uh, we've got a, uh, a screen where it's moved things around a little bit, but it's also showing me my spindle load, page down again, and I've got the original screen. Let's go one more time and now I've got the load for each individual axis as well as the spindle load. This is a really handy a handy screen to run from if you're not sure how your tool is wearing or your material is a little exotic. But I do find that an awful lot of people just leave it in the standard. Uh, if you're machining a, a well-known part and it's a lighter material, hey, yeah, maybe your loads aren't that important and you're just listening to them. One other feature of this, um, this main operating screen, if you notice in the upper right hand corner we have a work setup tab. This is basically a shortcut to our work offsets. Currently we're in work coordinate number one and it's highlighted in yellow to show us that that is the active work coordinate. Now the reason I call this a shortcut is because uh, some of the older Akuma controls would require you to go over to the parameters to get to your program zero and you could operate them from there. Well these two pages the, uh, the, the shortcut tab and the parameter tab, they are tied together. So I can operate my work coordinate from this shortcut screen and it will also register in the parameter screen. So it really doesn't matter which one you use. I just find that the one on the work setup tab is a lot easier to find. Uh, plus it's a quite a little boon to be able to not have to navigate away, not to have to navigate too far away from your primary operating screen. I do like that. 
Now we could spend hours and hours talking about uh, some of the rabbit hole screens as we go through different um, different functions of the control, but we're trying to keep this basic here. So we're going to move on to the next and the second most important screen to deal with when you're new to the Akuma, and that's your tool data screen. Uh, when the factory sends this machine out, there are no tools populated inside the magazine or the tool data tab. And uh, that, uh, but that's because the factory does not want to assume to know how you're going to utilize this machine. We could do it the, uh, the, the way CNC machines in the U.S. have done for years. And as we put in a tool, we just call up that tool into the spindle. We insert, remove anything that's there, insert the tool we want, and we're done or we could do this as if it were a library. Let's say for instance, we're gonna say that tool number 10 is a specific shell mill that never gets unmounted, but it does get pulled out of the machine and set in a tool library for a period of time and we want to reinsert it at a later date. So it gives us the ability to assign a graphic and an offset value to that tool number 10 and pull it out and insert it as we wish. And if someone tries to call that tool when it's not inserted, the control will tell us, hey, well, no, the tool's not there. So we're gonna focus on the easiest thing right now, which is let's just assign a tool to every pot in the spindle, even though physically the tool isn't there, just so that we can get the machine to behave how we want. We'll do a video at a later date that uh, describes the library function, but the first thing I wanna, wanna do is basically unlock this magazine so that I can call up tool 1M6 or a tool change macro such as G116 without the machine alarming out and saying, hey, I don't have that tool. So first thing I wanna do is to make sure, make absolutely certain that the entire magazine is set to NON or non-existent tool. Same with the spindle and the next tool. If there were a tool there, uh, I don't have one registered, but if there were a tool there, I would want to highlight that guy and use the F3 detach tool. Then I'm gonna move over to the tool data tab and make sure nothing exists there. If it does, I will want to use the delete tool data to get rid of it. The entire magazine and tool data tab must be blank because what we're about to do is tell the machine that uh, pot number two in the tool magazine is containing tool number two. Three is three, four is four, so forth and so on. And the way to do that is fairly simple if you know the buttons to push. So we're gonna start with F1, insert tool, and it pops up the tool data, the unmounted tool data. But of course, we don't have anything in there right now. If I arrow over one time, I get this button over F1 that says tool set. And that is gonna do exactly what I described. When I touch it, now it has taken tool num or pot number one and said, all right, tool one's in there, two's in there, three's in there, so forth and so on. Once you've done this procedure, now you can call up tool number M6 or G116 tool number, whatever macro you're using, and the machine will physically go and grab that tool. Now the, uh, the tough part about this is say for instance, I want to insert a tool in number 37. If I try to call 37 into the spindle, I am going to get a, get a condition where the computer believes that a tool physically exists in pot number 37. When the tool changer goes and grabs that, tries to put it in the spindle, the spindle is going to say, eh, I don't have a tool here, and it will stop. Now the tool change macros, uh, in general, they have a little conditional that uh, allows you to or allows the machine to get through that. If you're just using a straight M6 code, you will have to use the tool change recovery to complete that, sys that cycle. And you'll see that uh, tool change recovery process on uh, one of my videos on this, uh, this channel. So now we're familiar with the main operating screen and the tool data screen. That should be enough to get you running. And in the next series of video, or the next video in the series, we will talk about how to set work offsets 
and set tool length offsets if you don't have a an automated uh, like a Renishaw probe and tool stylus. So look forward to seeing you on the next one.